The other area where I said everything is forgivable is within oneself, how one sees and holds oneself. And um, this comes with the fact that we have the power of forgiveness. We're born with that ability to forgive other people for their transgressions. That also applies to us within ourselves. We have the ability to forgive ourselves and as part of this process of being accountable, of making restitution, of restoring balance, part of that process is this process of forgiving ourselves and not wearing the scarlet letter, so to speak, of self-condemnation, self-flagellation, self-degradation for choices we make. Everything that we do and choose in life has all been orchestrated by our souls, by the divine, for the purpose of our eventual God realization, for the purpose of the restoral of our full divinity. Everything in the world is a test, is a lesson, is a, an initiation, a rite of passage for us to learn how to become greater love in every moment. And yes, there are mistakes that people make along the way and people stumble and fall and people make conscious, consciously make not the greatest choices sometimes. But we also have the ability to restore. We have the ability to forgive. We have the ability to make restitution. And part of that process is that we, we look at, you know, why did I create this? And what have I learned from it? How is it, how can I take this experience and grow from it to become a, a better human being, a more loving human being? How can I learn from this so that I can expand in my consciousness and in my heart and be more than who I was moments ago? And in so doing, you expand and gift all of creation with the growth that you've achieved. So to condemn oneself repeatedly over a choice robs you and everyone around you and the whole universe of that expansion, which it was designed for in the first place. So that's what I mean when I say that everything is forgivable. Uh, and yes, it applies from stealing a pack of gum all the way up to murder and rape and crimes that people think are unforgivable. Everything is forgivable. And, and some people hold it with their piety, you know, in their religions and religious practice. And I have to say, in all fairness, some of the distortions that most religions teach, and all religions have some level of distortion, um, there's this belief system, more so in certain religions than others, that God will never forgive you and you'll be punished and you'll burn in hell and all that stuff. That's not true or accurate and, and doesn't even exist. Uh, and yet it's ironic that the religions who even speak that yet will still speak that God is all loving, all powerful, and you know everything comes from pure love. Then how would a God who is all loving and all powerful condemn and, and crucify and, and never forgive? It makes no sense. They're, they're, it's an oxymoronic pairing of, of phrases and belief systems. And one of them is not true. And the truth is that the Creator is pure love, all loving, all forgiving all the time, and God only and always sees us as perfect love. You know, ch like wayward children fumbling and finding their way. And just the way a parent who is the most beautiful, caring, kind, loving parent, you can take the, you know, the divine personification and bring it down into the human level. Think of, you know, those of you who have children, when you look upon a, a very small child, they break things, they make mistakes, they poop on the carpet and they spill stuff on, on the floor. And you know, you might have that momentary, Ugh, and then of course you're just going to sweep up this child and love it because you see an innocence, you see a naivete, you see an ignorance. And, and it's in that same vein that the creator looks upon humans bumbling and finding their way to become and restore their, their essence as true love, as pure love, that there's this tolerance there's this for constant forgiveness and acceptance. And, and paradoxically, it's not even really forgiveness. It's not that God forgives what we do because in God's eyes, we never erred in the first place. But we like to, humans like to think of it as forgiveness. So if that works for people, that's fine. But it's not even forgiveness because true unconditional love is unfaltering, it's unwavering. It doesn't, it's, it's not predisposed or preconditioned by the choices we make. It's unconditional. That's why a lot of people speak the phrase but don't really know what it means. Unconditional love means without condition. Nothing you could ever say or do would instigate, inspire, or, or 
tempt me or sway me to see you as less than perfect love and love you with less than all of my being. So if you see, can truly understand the concept of unconditional love, then that would help you understand that it's not that God forgives us of the things we do that are less than loving because the love is constant and unconditional at all times. And as above, so below, that by demonstration is the model for us to learn to become with, toward ourselves, toward our children, our spouses, our, our mates, our friends, our lovers, our workers, and everyone in the world. And as the world evolves and humanity as a species evolves into greater and greater frequency and vibration of love, then the race, the human race becomes more and more of that. And that's why so many of the great ones came to walk in the world to demonstrate that. The Krishnas, the Jesuses, the Muhammads, the Buddhas, and, and myriad others who are not as well known. But there have been many to model that, the divine human. Good question. Thank you very much.